Hi guys and welcome to today's video on the normal distribution and the 68, 95, 99.7% rule which in my opinion should be made much much simpler. So I'm sort of going to go for the maths guru rule. It'll never take off but you never know. One day we may look back and go do you know what that title was ridiculous. 68, 95, 99.7% rule. If you are here you are watching this further math series for a reason and hopefully it's to learn strangely enough about the normal distribution. I'm Darren Maths Guru and if you are an old hand to my videos hello welcome it is lovely to see you. If you are new then do me a favor and stick around because this video is going to tell you absolutely everything you need to know. Now if you are from overseas and expecting to see further maths as in the UK further maths video this is going to be fascinatingly informative but probably not quite the standard that you you are looking for. It is nonetheless really good to see you. Now if you can do me a favor and over there there is a red arrow which is pointing to a doohickey on YouTube that will allow you to subscribe to my channel. It's small channel. I am a small person trying to do quite a large job here in recording all of these videos to help all over the world and your support is greatly greatly appreciated. So if you can do that that'd be great and actually sort of sign up a couple of friends as well would be good too. That is assuming you have friends. Should really run a competition. Anyway what are we going to do by the end of this video? Well by the end of this video we are going to look and know what the normal distribution is and what the 68, 95, 99.7% rule is and how to apply it to all sorts of questions. Now in a previous video we very much looked at the idea of what standard deviation was and it was this magical mythical thing that allowed us to sort of look at a mean value and split sections. Now you're going to say what on earth are you talking about? You didn't talk about that. You talked about a formula and showed us how to use it on the calculator. I know I'm rushing ahead a little bit because standard deviations are really really important. Why? Well let's talk about it. If you are over here in Australia, a uh, tiny kangaroo down sport, and uh, that's the best it gets. I don't know, why it really hurts. How do you people speak like this? Um, you're about to undoubtedly uh, head in towards your VCE. And whether you know it or not, and I'm sure you do, the VCE is assessed on a bell curve. And a bell curve is actually nothing more than a standard DVA, uh, sorry, a normal distribution. And it looks very much like that. The reason it's called a bell curve is, strangely, it looks like a bell upside down. Think of all those Christmas cards you see. Now basically long story short here we go this here is what we call our mean value, our average value and generally speaking for your VCE that would be a study score of about 30. Now what we do is you'll notice that it's the highest here so we're looking for the most people to get around 30 and then as it gets higher and higher up this bell curve you'll notice the number of people who are allowed to get those study scores or those raw scores gets less and less and less and so by the time you get all the way over here you get a very very small percentage and I mean really small percentage who get study scores of 50 and I suppose all the way down here at the other end for those people who have found VCE really really hard then you're probably looking at a study score of around 10 or less and we try and make it so people get very very few people get that 10 and very very few people get a 50. Now I say we I don't that's VCAR that's their job how do they do it magic and voodoo but the point of it is a lot of what you're going to deal with this year uh, in terms of sacks and exams and whatever else are going to fit on this bell curve. And the important thing to know is this thing here is called a normal or normal uh, distribution. So that very bell shape is, is important. Now what's that got to do with the price of fish or standard deviations? Well as it turns out we can split that bell curve up into a number of key points or key sections. Now getting used to drawing these things I have to say for you guys is really really important. Now the first thing I'm going to say is that this central value here is our mean. So here our central value in that distribution is our mean. Now again we've met previous videos where we've talked about skew, uh, be it positive skew or negative skew and bimodal and all that type of stuff. But for the normal distribution it's split smack bang down the middle by my mean. And then what we do is we actually split it into thirds. Now if you are a keen photographer you'll know all about the rule of thirds. Uh, I suppose this is actually very very similar. Uh, this is the maths rule of thirds. Now what we've done there is everywhere I've drawn a dotted line there is one standard deviation away from the mean. Now the language there is really important. One standard deviation away from the mean. Two standard deviations away from the mean. Three standard deviations away from the mean. 
And what that literally means is, look at the mean and work out how far away it is. Now we have to be able to say, so this one here is one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations away from the mean. So that's moving in sort of the positive direction. And we have a negative direction here as well. So actually this is minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations, and minus three standard deviations as well. So literally that, there's one, two, and three sections, and minus one, minus two, and minus three standard deviations as well. And again, you're gonna sit there and go, well, all right, this is lovely, thanks very much, Mass Guru, but what does this have to do with the price of fish? Well, actually, nothing to do with the price of fish, but absolutely everything to be able to squeeze certain percentages of people into each of those sections. Now, remember, going back to what we were talking about the VCE a moment ago, we want quite a lot of people to be squeezed into this middle section. Now you're gonna say, uh, how many? And I'm gonna say 68%, as it turns out. And you're gonna say, 68%? That sounds very familiar. And I'm gonna go, oh, uh, you think? So the normal distribution, we split that in, and then somebody has gone away and actually worked out what percentage of data fits into each of those individual sections. Now, it feels like I'm gonna draw a lot of these, but I can't, um, stress enough how important it is to be able to realize that you are drawing a lot of these and probably will be drawing a lot of these. So here is my mean again. So all I'm going to do now is just draw the dotted lines just to make it a little bit clearer. But you need to remember that each of these dotted lines splits the sections into, well, I suppose thirds, it actually is quarters either side of that dotted line, but let's not get caught up. Now, if this is our mean, and this is my first standard deviation on one side, and my one standard deviation either side of that mean, then what we know is between the first standard deviation either side of that mean, there's 68% of the data. And so I can now draw an arrow between those two lines and say that is 68% of my data. 68% of my population, if I had 100 people out there that I had surveyed, then 68 of those people would fall between one and minus one standard deviation of the mean. If I had 1,000 people, then if I do 1,000 times 68%, gives me 680 people. And that's gonna become important, uh, important in just a moment. So there was the 68. And bearing in mind our rule is called the 68, 95, 99.7% rule. I wonder whether you work out where the 95 comes from. Well, absolutely. Bearing in mind as we move further away from the mean, more and more people will squeeze in. And so, one standard deviation either side was 68, two standard deviations either side. So this is between here and here. So this is my two, and if you remember, that's my minus two. So two standard deviations either side gives me actually 95%. God, this stuff is amazing. And I suppose we should then say, that three standard deviations are either side of my mean, so that's between three and minus three standard deviations is actually 99.7% of my distribution. Now, if you're wondering, those little M bits are also really important to us. Now we can work out what percentage of our population is there because if we know that 100% of my data fits underneath that whole bell curve, and we have 99.7 either side, then that must mean, uh, take away 99.7, gives me 0.3%. Now that's between both sections. And because it's symmetrical, that means either side of this gives me 0.15% and 0.15%. So again, a very, very small percentage of all of the people who do any exam will get a raw score of 50 because of this bell curve. Now, while those massive percentages there, before I move it off the screen, are very, very important, because while it's important to know that between the first standard deviation and 68%, it sometimes actually makes it much, much better for us to know what percentages lie in each of those little gaps. And you're probably gonna say, but why? And I'm gonna say there are questions coming up that very much explain why, but my advice to you, and there are lots of really good images on the internet that you can download that have color and all sorts of stuff, Otherwise, all of my notes can be found on mathsguru.com and they can be downloaded as PDF. So what I'm currently writing is possible to be downloaded in this exact form. You can cut it out, stick it in, whatever is, is important to you. So here we have my value of my mean. Here we have my first standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, 
minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations, and minus three standard deviations. Now what we're going to try and do now is work out what percentage of data lie between each of those dotted lines. Changing color to make this look slightly better. Now we know between here and here is 68% if you remember. And because those two sections either side of my mean are equal, then that means that this section here is 34%, sorry about my screen moving, and that section there is also 34%. So everything that is green here is 34%. Now it's again really important, when we have symmetrical, bearing in mind this thing is symmetrical, and we have this center line, hopefully you are aware then that that must mean that the whole of that left hand side is 50%, and the whole of the right hand side is 50% of my data as well. Okay, so moving my screen just down a little bit. Those are those two sections. What about when we move over? Let's change to red. Okay, so we now know that between two standard deviations, if you remember between these two standard deviations here, we knew was 95%. But we've already taken out 68%. So if I now do 95% minus 68%, what do I get? Well, 90, 68, 69, 70, that's 27%. So what it means is those next two sections have 27% shared between them. If I then divide that by two, that gives me a staggering 13.5%. What does that mean now? Well, this section here is 13.5% and this section here is also 13.5%. Whoa, this stuff is amazing. And you're sitting there going, really isn't Maths Guru? And I'm like, all right, don't judge. What about my last section? Well, we know that that next section, that section between three standard deviations, either side of my mean, was a grand total of 99.7%. We've already got 95%, remember? So if I now do 99.7 minus 95, what do I get? I get a staggering 4.7%. That is shared between two of those sections, which gives me 2.35%. So this here is 2.35%, and this here is 2.35% as well, squeezing that percent sign on really badly there. What about those N2 sections? Well, if you remember, they are 0.15%. All right, so they are 0.15%, which I will do like that. Now, if we were to add either side of those distributions, if I was to do 0.15 plus 2.35 plus 13.5 plus 34, I will get 50%. And if I add all of those together, I get 100%. Now, these individual percentages actually help us. How? Well, ladies and gentlemen, how do we use the normal distribution to answer questions? Well, it just so happens that Cambridge have fabulously and very kindly allowed me to use their Further Maths textbook series and the examples to help explain. I think that's really important. Textbooks questions that you're going to use tied into the scheme. Yes, thank you very much, Cambridge. Very, very helpful. So, being able to read this information. Firstly, the distribution of delivery times for pizzas, now hungry, made by the House of Pizza is approximately normal. Now, first things first, there is a keyword there that tells you it's normal. So that means it's normally distributed. And so I can now draw a diagram. Rubbing that out there so that I get a bit more room because obviously my head is going to be in the way. I'm going to draw my diagram here and there is my normal distribution. There is my dotted line. Thank you very much. It goes on to tell me it has a mean of 25. Well, that's awesome. Thank you very much. That now means that this center value here is 25. Where they give you that in a question, please, please, please put it in. And a standard deviation of five minutes. Now, this is probably the most important part of this. And I'm going to zoom in. Because what we're now being told is that the gap between each of these dotted lines is actually equal to five. And the biggest hint I can tell you is now right on those numbers. What do I mean by that? Well, add five on. So this now becomes 30. This becomes 35. And that becomes 40. This becomes 20, 15, and 10. Write those actual numbers on because it's really going to help us solve this question in just a moment. So bring it back down so that we can actually see the question. What do we see here? So the question says, what percentage of pizzas? The minute I see this word percentage, I'm like, hold on a moment. I know that. I've got sections in percentages. We'll have delivery times of between 15 and 35 minutes. Well, here is 15 and here is 35. So to be able to answer this question, I've got to say, well, 
between what standard deviations is this? Well, it seems to be between minus two and two. Oh, hold on a moment. Because I've got between minus two and two, if you remember, I can go straight to the idea that the 68, 95, 99.7% rule tells me that between two standard deviations is 95%. And I am, whoops, writing 9.5. I am stoked, 95%. All I've done is just use the title of the video. Thank you very much. Next one, what percentage, we can do this. Have delivery times of greater than 30 minutes. All right, so back to my diagram. I'm looking for greater than 30 minutes. Well, there's my 30 minutes and I'm drawing my arrow that there. Now, why am I doing that? Because visually, it really helps me. Okay, generally speaking, or a lot of the times, I'm gonna shade this in, and I'm like, oh, okay, how am I gonna work this out? Well, again, there's lots of ways of doing it, because you've now got those individual sections. So what I'm gonna say is, well, I know that that second section there is 13.5% of my data. I know that's 2.35% of my data, and that little end bit there, is 0 0.15, and if I add all of those together, so 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0 0.15, that gives me 10, 3, 4, 5, that gives me 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, and lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me 16% of my data. Now, could I have worked that, in another, uh, worked that out in another way? Yes, because actually, if I look at where my data has the mean, do you notice this section here? Well, that, that one section there we know is 34% of the data. So we have, during a very quick sketch, we know that this section here, the one that we don't want is 34% of the data. We know the whole half of that is 50% of my data. So if I do the 50% minus the 34%, I also get 16% and lo and behold, life is good. Now in one month, House of Pizza deliver 2,000 pizzas. I don't even know if that's a lot, it sounds a lot. How many of these pizzas were delivered in less than 10 minutes? Now do you remember, I went back a moment ago and said if you had 100 people, 68% of them would be in the middle, that's 68 people. This is what they're asking you to do now. They're saying, read off your percentage and multiply that by the total number. So in less than 10 minutes, so there is my 10 minutes, here is my section that's less than 10 minutes, and so I need to find my percentage. Well, I know my percentage is 0.15%. Whoop, whoop. So what it's now saying is, please, Maths Guru, can you work out 0.15% of 2,000? Now, normally I would fire up my CAS calculator. I'm not gonna do that for this moment in time because actually I did this video earlier, but unfortunately re-recorded it. And so how do I do that? Well, percent sign becomes divided by 100. So on my calculator, I do 0.15 divided by 100 times by 2000 just so happens to give me three. And the answer therefore here would be three pizzas. Literally, that's it. The questions that you are gonna get, I promise you, are so, so similar. Once you've done it a few times and you work out, it's about coloring in that chart we did a moment ago, then you will ace all of these questions. With all of the questions, as I say here, draw a diagram of the normal curve. Don't try and visualize it. If you're a boy out there watching this, don't try and visualize it. Mark on the mean. Add, sorry, split into the standard deviations. Draw those dotted lines. Write the numbers below each of the standard deviations. So if they tell you it's a standard deviation of eight, keep adding eight on and take eight away. And then just answer the questions by coloring in the sections. Now, probably the most important graph I have drawn, he says, being a little bit uh, hopeful, is that one there, yeah? Find a different version if it doesn't work for you, but those percentages are gonna be so, so important. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your time in watching this video with me now, but I'm done. Yes, hooray, 19 minutes and 48 seconds later. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it's made sense. Go out and practice. Now, if you haven't already done so, over there is a doohickey, a circle that you can click and subscribe to my channel. And again, please tell your mates if you can. Small person doing a big job. Other than that, there's a video loading below that circle thing with uh, another suggestion of a video you might like to watch. It is good having you along. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching. Have a good day. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Mass Guru, out.